Voice of Ash. Oh, hello. I'm Ash. This is part two of the two-part video series on Raspberry Pi computer and making of Whack a Mole, the arcade game. If you are new to the Pi and you haven't watched part one of the series, I would recommend that you do so. Uh, it has some useful information. Um, if not, in this part, we will build the game Whack a Mole. So the objective of the game is very simple. There are five lights with the switches attached to them. And these lamps or the LEDs, they go on randomly. You're supposed to hit the button before the light goes off. And if you press the button before the light goes off, you score a point. And there is a display which shows the score. Very, very simple. Let's talk about what hardware we need to build this game. One Raspberry Pi board. Five momentary LED buttons. Max 7219 dot matrix module for display. A wooden box to house the game. 26 AWG stranded wires. A breakout board which will connect all the wires to Raspberry Pi and there is a reason for that. Since there are so many wires, I didn't want to go through the hassle of connecting individual wires to the Raspberry Pi pins. So I decided that I can solder all those wires onto this board and then this board goes straight. It has a 40 pin uh, connector at the bottom which will go straight on the Raspberry Pi. So removing uh, or disconnecting the wires makes it much easier. DuPont connector kit. This will come in very handy and I also want to mention that buy a very good crimping tool. I have included the link below. It's very important that you have a good crimper. And of course you need a battery bank to power your Pi. Oh my god, I didn't realize that I had so many tools. So where shall we start? We had soldering iron of course. Um, then we have the crimper, we have the wire strippers, uh, uh, three of them actually, wire cutter, the uh, solder, the uh, tip tinner, and of course this, um, this copper looking thing on top left corner is to clean the bed. Um, and again, this is a one-time purchase. Once you have it, you will have it for other projects as well. Wow, that was a lot of work and I tell you it took me about a month to finish all that which I showed you in one minute of clip. This is the circuit diagram for Whack-A-Mole, uh, not much to it. There are five buttons, five LEDs and there are five pins on the on the uh, dot matrix display and all the pin numbers are listed here. Keep in mind that in the circuit di diagram I'm using GPIO pin numbering system. Now this is the part of Raspberry Pi I find it a little bit annoying that there are two or three different ways of counting pins but I find the GPIO pin numbering system to be the easiest. The design pattern behind this game is what I like to call as view and controller. Model after the MVC or model view controller a well-known design pattern in the web world. The game has many states. The states are changed by the controller code based on, upon events like pressing the button. And here are the events in the context of different states. At this point, again, feel free to pause the video and look at the different events which have been presented in the slide. 
So the multiprocessing module in the code takes care of two parallel running processes. Let me explain. <clears throat> Our dot matrix max729 display has this nasty habit of not responding to the next command until it has done processing the current command like displaying the score or displaying a marquee message, which, which may take some time because the message scrolls from left to right and takes a few seconds to do so. Yet, the things are happening in the gaming world, which is the second process. The players are scoring. So what do we do? So we kill the original display and assign a new task of displaying the updated score. And this is done using the multiprocessing module. Of course, I'm oversimplifying a very complex subject. In this game, there are simple button events like pressing the button at the right time to score a point. Then there are events like pressing the button for more than two seconds to pause the game or to end the game. This is done using the button held and button release events. The button held event is similar to the button pressed event, except it fires only after the button is pressed for a defined period, which in our case is two seconds. Last but not the least, let's make an entry in the cron tab table to execute our Python code so that the code runs when Raspberry Pi board boots up. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, please do comment below, post any questions you have, share the video with your friends, and I will see you next time. But stay tuned. I have a surprise for you. I will show you what I have coming, and this will be very interesting. Thanks. Dun, 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 dun. What do we have here? Ah, animatronics alligator head. <laughs> <laughs>